Generator, generator. Caution, caution. Welcome to this training mission, where we will cover the store's management system, available weapons and configuration, as well as selective jettison procedures. We will start with an overview of the Harrier's available weapons, then describe the weapons management system. Finally, we will take off and cover selective jettison in theory and practical application. The majority of this lesson will be conducted on the ground. Bear in mind that some of the more specific settings for given types of weapons will be covered in later lessons dedicated to the employment of those weapons. The AV-8B night attack aircraft is equipped with seven weapon stations, six under the wings and one on the center line. The fuselage station is used to carry the targeting pod, or T-pod, in the gun and cannot mount any other weapons. The Harrier is capable of employing a wide variety of guided and unguided ordnance that can be grouped into the following broad categories. Unguided bombs, including Mark 81s, Mark 82s, and high and low drag configuration, Mark 83s, as well as Mark 20 Rock Eye cluster munitions and training BDU 33 bombs. Laser guided bombs, including GBU 12 and GBU 16 Paveway 2s. GPS guided bombs, including the GBU 38, forward firing ordnance, including 5 inch Zuni rockets, 2.75 inch heat, high explosive, and white phosphorus rockets, and a 25mm equalizer Gatling gun. Missiles, including the AGM 65E laser guided Maverick, the AGM 65F IR guided variant, plus the AIM 9 Sidewinder and anti radiation AGM 122 sidearm. And finally, the LU-2 illumination flares, as well as up to four 300-gallon external fuel tanks. Let's begin with the weapons management system, starting with the overview of its components and their main functions. The storage management control set maintains an inventory of the loaded stores, monitors their status, and controls the release of the weapons. It consists of the stores management computer, stores station controllers, and the armament control panel. The stores management computer, or SMC, is a programmable digital unit that controls the SMSC. It is accessible to, and set up by, the ground crew. Parameters like stores codes, fusing codes, and quantity of loaded weapons are all inserted into the SMC. It also provides backup delivery capabilities in case of any failures. Store station controllers, or SSCs, are installed in each of the seven pylons. They contain the drivers required for selective jettison as well as backup systems. They also have arming drivers for normal, backup, and mechanical arming of the bombs. The heart of the system available from inside the pit is the Armament Stores Management Control Indicator, or ASMCI, which sits in the lower left portion of the main instrument panel. Its settings are also visible on the stores page on the MPCDs, and controls also available on the UFC and ODU. Let's start with the MPCDs. On your left MPCD, press the push button 18 once, and then select the stores page by pressing push button 4. You are now looking at the stores display, which shows you the location, type, number, and status of all weapons loaded in the aircraft. It also presents the selected weapon delivery program data. In the center of the stores menu, you have the characteristic wing form display with stations 1 to 7 marked from left to right. The weapon load is shown in alphanumeric legends. You will find a full list of these in your kneeboard and documentation. For this sortie, we have two Sidewinders on the outboard stations 1 and 7, two Mark 82 general purpose bombs on station 2 and 6, and two Zuni rocket pods on inboard stations 3 and 5. 
You can also see that the fuselage gun is mounted on Station 4. The number, 300, on top of the wing form indicates the number of gun rounds remaining. The number before each weapon legend is the quantity of ordnance loaded. No numbers means only a single weapon. As you can see, we are carrying two bombs on each of the pylons and four rockets in each pod. The top row of the display lists your available weapons. These will also be visible on other MPCD pages. An important note, the Harrier is capable of carrying up to four different types of ordnance at a time, plus the gun. If you load more than that, the fifth and any further type will not be displayed or recognized by the SMC or the mission computer. This limitation is for the benefit of the pilot, who does not have to memorize codes and delivery data for, say, seven different weapons. Loadouts consisting of more varieties of weapons are sometimes referred to as Franken-loads by Harrier pilots and are generally not popular. In the top left corner, you will see Safe or Arm Legend, which depends on the position of the master arm switch. First, press the AG Master Mode button to enter the Air to Ground mode. Now press Push Button 6 to select the Mark 82 bombs. You will notice that Stations 2 and 6 are now boxed. This indicates that they are selected and the weapons from these stations will be released with the next push of the Bomb Pickle button. The inverted triangle above one of them indicates the priority station. As you can see, some new information is now visible below the wing outline. This is the Selected Weapon Delivery Program. What will be displayed here depends on the type of weapon selected and may include all or some of the following information. Mode, quantity, multiple, fuse, interval, and target elevation, as well as max and minimum range queue for guns and rockets. Before we go deeper into these options, let's have a look at the different push buttons available on the MPCD. The cool option next to push button 2 is available only if the Sidewinder missile is loaded. It starts the missile seeker cooldown process and functions only with weight off wheels, although it can be pre-selected on the ground. The WRD option next to push button 4 enables the weapons release data display, showing the release data for the last release conducted. The Site option push button brings up the Site option on the ODU. It lets you select the desired Site Angle value. If it is set and selected, the Roll Stabilized Site appears on the HUD in the AG Master Mode. The Loft option push button is available when an AG weapon is selected and the Delivery Mode is Auto. You will learn more about it in the bombing tutorial. The TRNG, or Training option, would appear over push button 16 when no weapon is selected and when the fuselage gun is available for training. The gun is considered ready even if it is not installed or if it has no ammo left. The same goes for store stations. They will be available after you expend all the weapons from it. It enables you to perform an air-to-ground training mission with a simulated weapon load. The Tone option push button boxes the Tone legend and enables the COM-1 and 2 ARC-182 receiver transmitter to transmit a tone at a weapons release on selected channels. This tone will be heard by anyone on the same frequency. Please deselect the bombs now. You will notice one additional option next to push button 5, LOP, or load panel option. When pressed, it will display the nose and tail fuse codes below the loadout data for the store station. Now we have all that covered, let's move to the armament control panel. The Armament Stores Management Control Indicator, or the ASMCI, contains controls and indicators for the SMCS. Most of its indicators are mirrored on the MPCD page, and the programming can also be done via ODU and UFC. The ASMCI has a number of different functions. You will most commonly use it to set delivery mode, quantity, multiple, and interval of the chosen weapons. It can also be used for manual fusing, which is a backup mode, as well as for jettisoning stores. The leftmost switch controls the delivery mode. There are four main selectable modes, AUT for automatic, CIP for CCIP, DSL for depressed sightline, and DIR for direct. 
Fifth mode, AGM, is displayed whenever you select the Maverick or Sidearm missiles. Only mode selections applicable to the selected weapon are available. These will be covered in depth in the bombing practice training mission. The second switch from the left controls fusing. In total, there are 24 different options available, but there are some that you will see most often. These are SAFE, which is self-explanatory, IN for instantaneous or impact fusing, plus D1 and D2 for delayed detonations. The next two switches govern quantity. This setting tells the aircraft how many weapons will be released during a sequence. In other words, it is the total number of bombs or rockets released when you press the pickle button. Moving right, the next setting is multiple. This switch determines the number of stations that will simultaneously release a set of weapons. Now, it is very important to correctly understand these two. Quantity is always the total number of bombs that will be released in multiples of a number of simultaneous weapon releases. For example, with Q set to 2 and M set to 2, two bombs will fall from two stations simultaneously for a total of two bombs released. If Q is set to 2 and M is set to 1, two bombs will fall sequentially from one station. With Q set to 4 and M set to 2, the sequence will be as follows. Two bombs will fall from two separate stations simultaneously, followed by a set interval value, followed by two additional bombs, with a total of four bombs released. The same applies to rockets in the single setting. Q determines the total number of rockets to be fired and M tells the aircraft how many pods. In Ripple setting, Q tells you how many pods will fire at the same time. Ripple and single can only be set by the ground crew. We finally come to the interval and its three controlling switches. This control sets the release interval for a multiple release sequence and represents the ground impact spacing in feet. Bear in mind that in order for interval to function, the quantity must be greater than the multiple setting meaning that multiples of weapons will be employed sequentially with an interval between them. The number set in the window should be multiplied by 10. So setting it to 5 means 50 feet spacing between the bombs, 15 means 150 feet, and so on. The knob on the right is called the manual control knob. It is used as a backup solution, placing the SMCS in DSL-1 or manual delivery mode and enables the pilot to select mechanical fuse arming for the bomb selected with the station select buttons. Whenever the knob is placed in any other position than norm, it overrides the ACP settings. Moving to the bottom row now, the IR cool switch allows the pilot to manually apply IR detector cooling for Sidewinder seekers for pre-flight operation. However, it should be returned to off position before takeoff. If both sidewinders and sidearms are equipped, it should not be positioned to IR cool, as it may result in damage to the sidearm seekers. Directly to the left, you have seven station select buttons in their respective indicator windows. You can use these as an alternative to the top row push buttons on the MPCDs. Bear in mind that selecting one station selects a weapon rather than a given station, and makes the SEL legend to appear above all stations loaded with that given weapon type. Take some time now to switch between different weapons, change delivery modes, fusing, and so on. Observe how the information on the stores page changes as you adjust the settings. Let me know when you are ready to move on.
All right, last thing we'll do on the ground is to cover the use of UFC and ODU for stores management programming. As mentioned before, you can set up all the weapons without having to touch the ASMCI. Please select the bombs using push button 6 on the MPCD. Now look at the ODU. You should see the following options. Quantity, Multiple, Interval, and Fuse. You will only see options that are available for the selected weapon. You will find the summary in your documentation. Now as a general rule, in order to enable the UFC and ODU for entry of delivery parameters, after selecting the desired weapon, you should press the Weapon Push button on the UFC. Do it now. Let's set the quantity to 4 and multiple to 2. As you can see, the quantity is already selected on ODU. A semicolon is displayed next to it. Press 4 on the scratch pad and then press Enter. Now press the ODU push button 2 to select multiple. Press 2 on the scratch pad and then press enter. You can set up all the other parameters in a similar way. To change the fusing, you should repeatedly press the corresponding OTU push button until the desired fuse setting is displayed. Go ahead and change the weapons and check the available options. Let me know when you are ready to proceed. Apart from weapon, there is one more push button we should briefly cover here, the Radar Altimeter Function Select, or ALT. Press it now. When selected, it will show four different options on the ODU. The first one, marked BOMB, enables the use of Radar Altimeter as the source of elevation data when the mission computer performs weapon delivery calculations in an RCIP delivery mode. The second one is PUC, or Pull-Up Queue. When enabled, it provides queuing to the pilot to pull out of a dive to avoid flying into a weapon's fragmentation envelope, or to release a weapon by a given altitude to ensure there is sufficient arming time prior to impact. In order to set the desired PUC, use the UFC keyboard. It will normally be given during the briefing. The two other options are GPS and GPWS. GPS disables the radar altimeter and enables the GPS as the source of elevation data for weapon delivery in the GCIP delivery mode. The GPWS is Ground Proximity Warning System. If it is enabled, an arrow will appear on the HUD warning the pilot of controlled flight into terrain, indicating the direction the pilot should pull to avoid a collision. All right, we wasted enough time on the ground. Go ahead and take off, fly to waypoint one, and climb to 5,000 feet MSL. We will continue once you are airborne. Couple Eddie, Dodge, one, one. Request taxi to runway. Eddie. Dodge, one, one. Request taxi to runway. Dodge, one, one. Couple Eddie, clear the taxi to runway 
7. Ready. Dodge one one. Request takeoff. Dodge one one. Cobra ready. You are cleared for takeoff. We're ready. Climb three zero zero at QFE two nine decimal eight six.
time to go over the store's jettison procedure in the Harrier. Once we cover the basics, we will turn towards Waypoint 2, which is over the controlled jettison area for the Kabaletti Airport. There are two main ways to get rid of your stores. One is by using the Emergency Jettison button located on the landing gear panel. Once pressed, it will jettison all stores on all stations, including their suspension equipment, apart from sidewinders on station 1 and 7, which will be retained. The second option is to use the selective jettison knob and switch located on the ASMCI. The red switch is in the middle of the knob. Let's have a look at different options. The first one, marked STA, will jettison selected stations, including the suspension equipment. In order to use it, turn the knob to STA, select the desired stations using the appropriate station select buttons, and press the jettison switch. The second one, marked STOR, will jettison all the weapons of the selected type. It is similar to STA, but if you select a station, you will also select other ones carrying the same munition. So, all Mark 82 Hydrag bombs at a time, all Mavericks at a time, etc. The procedure is the same as for STA. The third one is marked SAFE. This is the default position for the knob. The fourth one, CBT, or Combat, will jettison all stores on all stations, except Sidewinders on the outboard stations. It is very similar to the emergency jettison option, except for its interlock. Whereas emergency jettison will work either with landing gear up or weight off wheels, combat jettison will only function if both landing gear is up and there is weight off wheels. The fifth and final one is marked fuel. It allows selection of stations 2, 3, 5, and 6, wet stations, if they are carrying fuel tanks. Fuel tanks are dropped in pairs, 2 and 6, then 3 and 5. The procedure is the same as for other types. You first select the station, and then press the jettison switch. Alright, turn towards waypoint 2 and test different jettison options over the designated area. When ready, you are cleared to RTB.
Caution. 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 Lady. Dodge one one inbound. Dodge, one, one, pull up, request pull landing. Up. Pull up, pull up. Couple Eddie, Dodge, one, one, request landing.
Welcome back to Cabaletti. Taxi to the parking spot and shut down the engine. Thank <laughs> you. 